All of a sudden, a lot of people started hitting me. Didn't you get stopped by the police with Pete? Honestly, I had no idea what to do with my life. I remember thinking, this is risky. I kind of just invested everything I had and hoped that it would work out. It's either going to go really well for him or it's going to go badly for you. I feel very lonely sometimes. That's something that not a lot of people know about me. Where do you think the story of Magnus really started? The story started when I started climbing because none of this would have happened if it wasn't for climbing. I found my passion and I was climbing. I've always been very determined on what I want to do. I don't waste any time doing anything else. I don't do much for pleasure. I take everything really seriously. If I find something I like, I will stick to that. I have no interest in trying other things. And I want to get even better at the things that I'm already pretty good at. As soon as I started climbing, that was the only thing I did. And I didn't want to sacrifice any climbing time for anything else. Like I would never hang out with friends who were not climbers. I would be very dedicated to just that one thing that slowly uh, became my job and as you know it's pretty hard to make it as a professional climber you make very little money and it's it's hard you know you, you always have to satisfy the sponsors and everything so then when i retired in 2017 i honestly i had no idea what to do with my life i never even finished high school i was hoping to become like a root setter and it was really good for me because I was still making a living off of the sponsors that I had. So I was able to take a little bit more risk. It is very difficult to start YouTube if you have a full-time job and you have to do that on the side. But I could kind of start YouTube uh, while my sponsors were still paying me enough. Would you say that you called yourself a YouTuber from the day that you produced your first ever YouTube and uploaded it or was there a defining point where you said I am now a YouTuber? As soon as I that started to become like my main source of income that's when I called myself a YouTuber and that was the fall of 2018 and I don't even know if I call myself a YouTuber I don't I'm not good at labeling myself like I, I, and I don't care what people call me either they can call me an influencer I wouldn't care a lot of people hate being called an influencer I don't like it but I don't care what they, people call me uh, I think a lot of people like to find like fancy words for stuff. I'm not like a film expert or anything. I'm a, yeah, YouTuber is good. That's what I do. I make you videos for YouTube. But I wanted to work with climbing and that's also why I decided to invest all my savings into the first climbing gym in Oslo. So I kind of just in invested everything I had into that gym and hoped that it would work out. What for you does success look like? What defines it for you? I'm trying to buy myself more time. Right now I'm trying to remove some of the other distractions so that I can have more time just for YouTube because that's what I enjoy doing the most uh, to make YouTube videos. But all the other like business stuff, it's kind of getting, getting in the way of that. I hope to have more time on YouTube. That's, a, that's my goal. I'm trying to build this up so that I don't have to work really hard in like 10 years or 20 years that I can kind of focus on more like passion projects. The gyms and all the other stuff that I have going on is giving me enough income to just do what I want to do, uh, not having to worry about money and stuff. That is my goal. And to be able to go on climbing trips and not film anything, you know, just kind of do whatever I feel like. Or if I want to take up sailing, I want to become good at sailing, I can do that without thinking about like, how to make money. So that, that has been my motivation from, from the start, just to be free. Probably more the, the idea of being be able to do what I want. I think if I had all the time in the world and the money in the world, I'd just get bored. I would wanna do something. I wanna kinda create something or start something. For me, that's always been the goal, just the freedom. For the month of March, we've teamed up a flash to give away a drifter crash pad and their new bolt brush. All you have to do to enter is number one, like this video, and number two, make sure you're subscribed to the Climbers Cry YouTube channel. What do you think people misunderstand about you as a a team or a, a content pr producer? Because you're not, you haven't got someone doing your makeup and doing this and you have to do all the easy jobs. I think it's the amount of time that everything takes. Sometimes I prefer filming on my own because it takes less time. I'm super efficient when I film. It's like lights there, camera there, B camera there, press record, film, do the stuff. Like people underestimate how much work it actually is because everything from filming to editing, especially editing, how time consuming that is. And it would be easy to just spit out like a video, do a really quick edit, but 
if you want to do like a proper video where you color grade and do everything from scratch, it really takes a lot of time. A few videos, I've spent like two or three days on a video and I've just deleted everything from my computer because I don't think it's good enough. It's the same thing as with climbing, you know, you, you really have to love it, it to become good at it because otherwise you're not going to do it for long enough. To be very honest, you know, people don't want to see polished version of yourself. Sometimes I feel like I'm too polished. I try to be as real and as genuine as possible. I used to be a perfectionist when it came to climbing. Now it's YouTube. I remember watching your early stuff way back, like quite a few yeah. years ago. And I remember thinking, this is risky. It's yeah. either going to go really well for him or it's going to go badly for you. For you. Mm -hmm. And that's what's yeah. interesting now because it's easy to look and go, well, look at it. You freaking got a million uh, subscribers. You clearly yeah. were doing the right thing, but it's not easy to see right at the start. No, and, and also I got a lot of criticism in the store, you know, people saying that I was like sold out. I spend a lot of time on making videos, I spend a lot of money on camera equipment and uh, traveling and stuff, and I just got criticism for it. It was rough in the start. What things have surprised you about being a YouTuber? What's different to how you might have expected it three, four, five years ago? I feel a little bit isolated from the rest of the world sometimes. So you can sit inside, edit the video all day, and you kind of feel like no one can relate to your struggles. I often feel like I have more in common with people who do YouTube because they can relate to all the struggles of memory cards not working and color grades not turning out the way you want and music. It's, there's just so much stuff going on. Uh, you feel very lonely sometimes, and I've said this before, I think that a lot of YouTubers, even though they seem like extroverts, they're more introverted. That's their kind of way of being social, social is to talk to a camera, they sit and edit themselves and they put out videos. And I consider myself very introverted. And it's kind of the way I'm social. I don't know if it's a good thing, it might be very unhealthy, but I kind of interact through like comments and stuff with people who know me and it, it, that's kind of my way of being social. What have you used your 1 million followers to get you? <laughs> Have you abused and abused your clout as a big number now? Nothing actually, no. <laughs> it's really just a number and especially on YouTube. I see a lot of channels with a million plus subscribers dying out and that's not sustainable. Like you can't make a living off of that. I don't take anything for granted, you know, even though I have a million subscribers, it's not like, I'm not gonna rest. I'm gonna try to keep evolving. It's, it's always a struggle to find new stuff to do. And I think eventually all creators are gonna get hate at some point. They're gonna mess up, they're gonna do a mistake. And honestly, I don't know how I would deal with that. Because I, I definitely think that would be very difficult for me to deal with. I don't know if I could keep that up then. I, do, I don't think I could see this just as a business and keep going with YouTube if I got a lot of hate. Like I love being behind the camera, probably more than I like being in front of the camera. So I like just being able to film as well. And that's why big wall climbing and stuff is really hard because you need someone else to do all the work. If you film yourself on a big wall, like it's gonna be okay, but it's not gonna be like as good as it can be. So I, I definitely think like more like expedition style, go to like the South Pole or just cool places like that. That would be my dream. Go to places that not a lot of people get to go to. I don't wanna keep doing the fitness stuff either forever, you know? It's definitely exhausting and also you have to be in really good shape and I mean I'm 33 years now and I don't know how long I can keep doing the fitness stuff for you know so I definitely would like to do other things as well and I've there are other like there are competitors to YouTube who have been in touch they give you a very big budget to make anything you want you have to put your videos behind a, like a paywall and I, I would, I refuse to do that. Uh, I want my videos to be seen by as many people as possible. I feel like people who watch my YouTube videos actually know me pretty well. People watch my YouTube videos, they feel like they watch a friend. That's how it should be. Hey, like that video? <laughs> I'm sure you'll love this next one.